Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to implement Bayesian linear regression using TensorFlow. I've actually gone ahead and taken the liberty to do a little bit of setup, um, which involves writing out the posterior. So, uh, indeed, the posterior of a Bayesian linear regression, record, uh, assuming uh, Gaussian distribution of errors and the normal prior is another uh, normal distribution and it has a uh, closed form expression for the mean and the uh, covariance matrix of that normal distribution. And so what I'm going to do is show how you can implement that in TensorFlow and I'm going to use uh, a few uh, techniques from numerical computing uh, to make sure that it's being done in a very stable way. Uh, so you'll get to see all of that. So to begin with, I'm going to generate some uh, some fake data. So I'll just uh, add some data. And for that, I guess I should add a few imports here. I'm going to need NumPy. I'm going to need TensorFlow, obviously. And I'm actually going to need uh, a very particular import from the TensorFlow contrib. So I've got contrib. I believe it's distributions, yes. Um, from distributions import, and then it's multivariate normal trial. All right, good. So with that taken up, uh, taken care of, I'm going to generate, let's say, a hundred points, and uh, maybe it'll have we'll have three uh, linear coefficients random.normal, so our design matrix will just be a, a totally independent random normal noise uh, matrix of covariates. And then we'll create a vector of linear coefficients, which I'll also make normally distributed. There's going to be a lot of normally distributed stuff um, in this demo. And then finally, y will be normal with mean x dot w. And then I'll give it just a noise of noise level of one. Okay, so maybe uh, what we can do is actually visualize this to start off with. Yeah, that plot lib but pi plot SPLT. I'll make this if true because I'm going to turn it off in a minute. PLT dot figure, make it nice and big. Seventeen comma six. PLT dot plot x y plot dots I'll show a grid and then show the whole plot let's go ahead and run this see if it doesn't error oh it did error why did it error x and y must have the same dimensions That's odd. I didn't expect that. X. Oh, well, no wonder. It's because I'm trying to visualize a three-dimensional surface in one dimension. So there's that. That's OK. Let's make the coefficients a little bit bigger so we see a more distinct trend. Yeah, there we go. So that's our, our data points. And uh, we're going to try to learn regression coefficients that interpolate that data. OK. Uh, I'm going to turn this off for now. So now we need to do variable setup for TensorFlow. So we should have placeholders for the uh, design matrix. And I'm going to use float 64s for this. <coughs> we'll need it for both x and y. Good. And now, let me think. Oh yes, we also need uh, precision variables. So we need precision variables uh, for the 
linear coefficient and the noise level, which are represented by A and B in the formula up here. So in particular, uh, we're going to assume that Y is distributed uh, with uh, mean uh, X dot W and uh, noise variance of uh, A inverse and then we're also going to assume that the prior on uh, the, the coefficients W has mean zero and uh, a precision of B times the identity. Okay, so to make that more explicit, I'm going to do model um, noise precision. It's just another uh, TensorFlow placeholder. And then model W precision, same thing. Good. Okay, so now I guess we should, uh, we can actually start to compute, compute the mean and variance of the posterior. So we'll start with lambda, model lambda equals the model uh, noise precision times tf dot mat mole model x model x and then mat mole has a nice uh, keyword argument which is to transpose the first uh, input so that that works nicely and then we need to add I'm going to make another variable I'll just call it model i for the identity uh, tf dot i size k so it'll be model w precision times i. Okay, now in order to uh, compute mu, you may notice that we actually need to take a inverse of lambda. I'm going to make that a capital L. And uh, matrix inversion, uh, you usually don't actually have to do a direct inverse. Usually you can um, find other uh, more numerically stable ways of, of getting the same quantity. Uh, and I'm going to show uh, some of that right now. So, first of all, uh, we need to do a Cholesky decomposition. So we'll do tf.cholesky and feed in model lambda. That's model L. So now, if I want to compute um, uh, mu, actually pretty straightforward to do. Um, I need model noise precision times tf dot solve Chileski and then it'll take in input model L and then tf dot map mole model X model Y And then we do the same input to, to transpose them. And then I'm actually going to do tf.squeeze on this because I happen to know that uh, that'll be an advantage for us later on. Okay, so let's see if I've done this correctly. I'm going to create a TensorFlow session with tf.session as sesh. I don't have any variables, so I actually don't need to call the init. I will create a feed dict, though. Model x maps to x, model y maps to y, model noise precision. I'm just going to use 1 for that, and then model uh, w precision. I'll set it to something pretty uninformative, low, low precision. And then let's see, uh, let's do this. So this is mu sesh dot run 
model new and we will feed dict and then I'll print out TensorFlow mean new and then I'll say true linear coefficients format w. We'll run that. Uh, I mistyped placeholder. I is not defined. Ah, how annoying. Didn't get the type right. This is really typical, actually. It must be Cholesky solved. <laughs> There we go. Well, that's interesting. It's um, a bit larger than I was expecting. Um, let's try it with three random variables instead. Okay, I think it looks pretty reasonable here. Um, <clears throat> okay, good. So now, um, supposing that we don't just want the mean of this uh, posterior distribution, that, but we actually want to be able to uh, draw samples from it. So in that case, uh, what we actually need to do is uh, invert lambda so that we can uh, obtain the actual covariance matrix. And uh, as I said before, I, you actually don't need to do that because we can just add a line here. I'll call it model L inv equals um, tf dot, uh, I think it's solve, or maybe it's matrix triangular solve. Yeah. Um, and it takes input model L and I and I believe just as a check we can do model sigma equals tf dot mat mole model L in model L in and then I may think I do have to take the transpose again. So if I've done this correctly I should find that model sigma is the inverse of model lambda. Let's see if that's true. So I'll do lambda sigma equals sesh dot run model lambda model sigma feed in the feed dict and then I'll do print check inverse, print lambda dot dot sigma. Model. And we can see that indeed to machine precision this is giving us the, the identity matrix. So that's good. Now what I actually needed model L inverse for was uh, so that I can provide that to as an input to the multivariate normal triangular uh, uh, density. So if I do dens equals multivariate normal triangular, it'll have mean model mu and a, sc a scale matrix of uh, model L inverse. <clears throat> and then if I want to draw samples, sample from the posterior, that's easy to do. We just do samples equals sesh dot run. I'm going to call this model dens. Model dens dot sample. Let's draw a thousand samples. 
by the feed date again. And uh, let's take this opportunity to inspect the samples. Samples. Looks pretty good. So if I do samples.mean axis equals zero, we see that we're pretty close to what the, the mean says it ought to be. And indeed, we're also getting uh, reasonably close, I think, to the, to the true linear coefficient. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. So anyway, thank you guys for, for watching. That's, that's about it. Uh, in this video, we saw how to implement the posterior of a Bayesian linear regression in TensorFlow. And we also saw a few numerical computing techniques that we can use to uh, make sure that our calculations are stable, uh, in particular solving um, uh, triangular matrices, taking Cholesky decompositions, and using them to generate um, normal random variates. So uh, again, thank you guys for watching, and uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. See ya.